Good morning, guys. So welcome back. So Mr. Chen again. So let's continue to talk about the analysis. So this one is part four of the uh, Algebra 2 Tricks study packet. And last time we already talked about the way to sketch the transformations functions with rational, radicals, quadratic, absolute value, all that. And now this one is for the transformations of all the trig functions, sine, cosine, tangent, cotangent, secant, and cosecant. So for the previous video, so the one that I uploaded a long time ago, so you'll see some of the, the trig function graph. So we're not going to do like in-depth graphing, so I just want to put in the basic analysis with those type of form. Like the basic form, alternate form, ultimate form, the way to find out the period, the phase shift, the vertical translations, and the amplitude or the scale factor, or perhaps the uh, one cycle test. Very important because that basically shows you where you need to start it and where you need to finish with the one cycle graph. Okay, so take a look at that, number 76. So this one is given as y equals 4 sine of the quantity theta over 3 minus 60. So let me just snip this one. And then I'll put into the new slide for the analysis. So anytime they deal with the form, so you always want to compare that with the ultimate form of the trig function. And for those you might be wondering what do I mean by the ultimate form. And then for those of you who watched the, the previous video, you guys already noticed that the ultimate form of all kind of trig function is always written as y equals a sine of b times the quantity of x minus h plus k. Okay, so where a, if that's a sine and cosine, it's always the amplitude. Again, if this one is the amplitude, that's only for sine and cosine. Well, what about for tangent and cotangent, secant and cosecant? They're always considered a scale factor. We'll get to that. And then b, it's just the, the factor of the quantity, the factor of the period. Okay, so compare and contrast. So one thing that we notice so this one is considered the non-factor form of the ultimate form. So what you can do, you can always pull that one-third. So this one is written as theta minus 180. So if you see the big number like that, that means it's in terms of degree. Well, when do I know that that is in terms of degree or radian? If this one shows that in terms of pi, then that would be radian. If that only shows the number, so that means it's in degree. Okay, so take out one third. So one third times the quantity of theta minus 180. And then, well, I mean, you can set up plus zero here. So compare and contrast, you can say that A is what? Four, that's the amplitude. And then B, the scale factor, one third. So the way to find a period for that sine and cosine function is always two pi over B. So it's always two pi over one third. So which is 6 pi. And then we do know that h is 180 degrees. In terms of radian, it's pi. And then k, it's nothing. There's no vertical translation. And keep that in mind, for the sine curve, it's always considered a roller coaster. So basically, you need to put in the roller coaster curve on the new template. Once you find the one cycle, the new cycle. So another thing I would like to show you here is the one cycle test. So for those of you who might be wondering how do I perform the one cycle test for sine, since we do know that the parent graph is running through from 0 to 2 pi, so that means it's bounded from 0 to 2 pi. And whatever the quantity that you have inside or right after that sine of theta without the value of k, so this one is the, it's the quantity we want to put in for the inequality, the compound inequality. So this one solve for theta, well instead of using two pi's, because this one is in degree, so let's just convert that to a degree, which is what, 360? So f60 on both sides, so we got 60 equals less than or equal to theta over 3, and it's less than or equal to 420. And then multiply by 3 on both sides, the left, the right, and also the one in the middle, so we got 180 it's less than or equal to theta, it's less than or equal to, so 3 times 2, so 6 times 4, so 1,260 degree. 
So you might be wondering it's a big number. It is. So it's better for you to use the radian to make the angle smaller. Okay, so using that radian, so this one can be done by using zero is less than or, less than or equal to theta over three. We don't change that one third because that's just a scale factor. And then 60, you want to convert that to radians. So then it's what, pi over 3. So it's less than 2 pi. You can always do it that way too. Okay, if you don't like that in terms of degree, to make it smaller. Okay. So again, once you set up the one cycle, you'll see where you started with the, the curve on the x-axis. And then where you need to finish the one cycle on the x-axis. Okay, so now let's see what else. Back to the template. And what about for cosine? So similar to the one that I did with sine. So again, do the one cycle test. So A for this one, which is, well, let's just rewrite it. So Y equals two cosine of, take out that two. So we do have two times theta minus, so two times 135, then that would be 270. Again, it's in degree, there's no radian here. So A is two, and then B is two. So the period, then that'd be two pi over two. So then that'd be pi. H is 270 degrees. And then K is two. So this one to scale, you see that the X scale, it's all written in terms of degrees. And then for the one cycle test, quite similar to the one with that sine of data, it's exactly the same kind of cycle. So zero to 360 or zero to two pi. And then you just want to put in the quantity right in between. So at 135 first. So 135 plus 360, so we do have 495, and then divided by two. So you'll see that you started off with 135 over two, and then it finished out at 495 over two. So again, if you don't like the degree scale, you can always convert that to radian. So for the cosine curve, it's just a bell curve for the parent function. So it goes this way. From 0 to 2 pi. Amplitude. So this one is 1. Okay, so now let's see what else that we have. So we got sine already, so this one got covered already. Again, it's the ultimate form, so this one I just swapped the value of k, the position of k, and the rest of the, the elements of the trig functions. So now what about for the one with uh, cosecant? So quite similar to the sine curve, so this one is based on the parent graph of sine. Okay, so this one it's written as a cosecant of b times the quantity of x minus h plus k. So just rewrite it, so y equals three cosecant of one third, so theta plus, well, since we took out one third, so we need to multiply by three, so 30 times three, so it's 90 plus one. So a in this case is just a scale factor or the initial amplitude, and then B, it's one third. So the period for this one is two pi over one third, which is six pi. And then for H, it's 90 degrees. And then K, it's one. Okay, so try to do the one cycle test. So this one is quite similar to the way that we do the one cycle test for sine. But keep that in mind. So at zero and two pi, those are the VA. So we don't include the initial and the final positions for the one cycle. So just putting down the quantity, theta over three plus 30. Instead of using degree, you can use radian. So 30 degree in terms of radians, pi over six, okay? So subtract pi over six. So two pi minus pi over six which is, so we got 12 pi over 6 minus pi over 6, 11 pi over 6. And then multiply by 3, so we got negative pi over 2 
less than theta it's less than 11 power 3 11 power 2 excuse me so again you can always change the scale if you don't like the scale for the template or you can just reconstruct the uh, x-axis the y-axis and put your own scale okay so 84 for secant so this one is based on the, the parent graph of cosine. So once you see the vertices there, you'll see the, once you see that the max and the min, you'll see the vertices for the parabola, for the secant graph. Again, this one is the structure of A, secant of B, times theta minus H plus K. So you probably see that previously I used X, so same as theta. And this one can be written as 2 secant of 1 half theta minus 120 and then plus 2. So A, which is the scale factor, and then B is 1 half. So period, 2 pi over 1 half, 4 pi, and then H, 120 degree in terms of radian, then that would be considered 2 pi over 3. Okay, so let's see, 180, 60, yeah. And then for K, which is 2, and try to do the one cycle test. So we got 0 to 2 pi, or 0 to 360 degree. Now let's just use radian. Theta over 2 minus pi over 3. So add pi over 3, compound equality. 2 pi minus pi over 3, so 12 pi, well, let's see, 6 pi over 3 minus pi over 3, 5 pi over 3. And then multiply by 2, so 2 pi over 3, it's less than or equal to theta, it's less than or equal to 10 pi over 3. Okay, so for the one cycle test. Now for cotangent and Tangent, so got to be a little bit careful. So for the one cycle test of tangent, then that'll be from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. And then for cotangent, the one cycle test is from 0 to pi, because the parent graph. Okay, so this one, again, this one is written as y equals k plus a cotangent of b times theta minus h. So we write it, so we got y equals 2 plus 4 cotangent of 1 third. So theta plus 3 times 120, so 360. So a for this one is 4, and then b it's 1 third. And then period is pi over b, so pi over 1 third, 3 pi. And then for h, negative 360, shift it to the left, and then k, which is 2. And then the one cycle test from 0 to pi, so you want to put in that theta over 3 plus 120, or theta over 3 plus 2 pi over 3. And then you just solve for theta. And now for the rest of this, find the exact value of each. So this one, we need to apply the uh, half angle identity. So this one is showing that cosine of theta, it's right between 630 and 720. So 630 and 720, so that one is in quadrant four. So that means we have to go around the unit circle twice. And then it's all in quadrant four, 630 and 720. So that means we can find out the solution in this quadrant here, quadrant four. So what about the trig identity of tangent of theta over two? So using the trig identity, half angles of tangent. So we do have either one minus cosine of theta over sine of theta or sine of theta over one plus cosine of theta. Well, it's easier to use the first form.
because the the other form you sometimes you probably have to rationalize it. So one minus cosine of theta over sine of theta. So this one is one minus cosine of theta over sine of theta. And we already know does that theta it's in quadrant four. Okay, so what we can do, so let's put in the ratio. So we got 8 over 17. And then opposite, it's not given. You can use the Pythagorean theorem to find out exactly what that is. So 17 square root of 17 square minus 8 square minus 64. Okay, so again, this one is just a setup. So once you find out the ratios, so just plug in a number and then simply evaluate it. So 1 minus a over 17 divided by sine of theta. Well, just find out exactly what that ratio is. Okay, so 17 square minus 64 square root. Hopefully that's a perfect square number. And then you put it in for the ratio right here. And then the rest of that, simply just evaluate it. Okay, let me just put it this way first. Uh, but the thing is that this one's negative for sine because that's in quadrant four. And then the rest of this, so basically just simplified it. And then for tangent, it's quite similar. So sine of theta over two using the identity. So half angle identity. So it's plus minus square root of one minus cosine of x over two. So this one plus minus cosine of theta over 2. Well, the reason why it's plus minus because we need to find out exactly which quadrant that the angle is. So we do know that tangent of theta is 2, so it's in quadrant 1 because that's being bounded. Theta is being bounded from 0 to 90 degree. Okay, so tangent of theta opposite over adjacent. So that means hypotenuse, it's considered square root of 5. Because 1 square plus 2 square, that's 5. Square root of 5. We don't know what that is. Irrational number. And just plugging the number here. So theta. So this one, it's all in quadrant 1. So that means positive, half angle. So theta over 2, so 90. Well, it's in first quadrant because that theta is already in first quadrant. Half of the angle is also in first quadrant. So it's a positive ratio. So square root of 1 minus cosine of theta. So adjacent over hypotenuse, 1 over root 5 divided by 2. And then you want to simplify it all the way through. So this one is a radical with another radical. So square root of root 5 minus 1 over root 5 and then divided by 2 that means you multiply by the reciprocal and then from here you want to rationalize it okay so just simplify it all the way through and then the next type of problem verifying the identity okay so you want to show that the complicated side is the same as the right hand side so let's do 91 so for sine, the sum of sine, again, using the identity, so the sum of sine, we do have sine of x plus y, so sine of x cosine of y plus cosine of x sine of y. So basically using the identity, so we can expand out the, uh, the binomial. So sine of 3 pi over 2, cosine of theta, and then plus cosine of 3 pi over 2 times sine of theta. Well, is that going to be the same as negative cosine of theta? We don't know about that yet. But sine of 3 pi over 2 on the unit circle, that's about what? Negative 1, right? Exactly at negative 1. At 3 pi over 2 here on a unit circle. So we do know that 0, comma, negative 1. So sine of 3 pi over 2 is exactly negative 1. And then cosine of 3 pi over 2, that's 0. So 0 times sine of theta. So that's nothing. So what's left here? It's just what? Negative cosine of theta. And that's exactly what we have on the right hand side. So again, verifying the identity. So whatever the one that looks more complicated, 
whatever the side of the equation that looks more complicated and that's the one you need to simplify so try to expand it using the identity or sometimes using the algebraic technique to s reduce or factor so you can simplify it all the way down to the, the lowest term and now what about for 93, 94 so it looks like this one's the last set of the problem and according to the structure this one is about the product to sum formula and this one is something we need to know for pre-cal not for algebra 2 and trick yet but so far it's good to uh, practice it's good to know so even though that's not going to be on the uh, the final so product to sum sum to product formula so those are the optional formula you guys need to know for trick but in pre-cal definitely you guys need to know exactly what they are and here's the one so the product to sum so sine of x cosine of y sine of x sine of y it's all about the product cosine x cosine y cosine x sine y so you can always expand it out you can always rewrite them as the sum the sum formula of sine cosine and cosine cosine and cosine and sine with sine and what about the factoring formula this one is like the going backwards so sum to product so sum to product if you do have like the identical trig functions but with different angle you can always condense them into a product so this one's called a product to sum formula and not a name for the factoring formula it's called the product uh, the sum to product okay so this one it's all about product to sum okay let's see which one that is so let's do the one with cosine and sine so cosine and sine so cosine and sine it's always written as one half times sine of x plus y minus sine of x minus y okay so this one to two that's just the coefficient we can always ignore that or just bring it down so one half times sine of x plus y so x is what 75 y is 45 so 75 plus 45 and then minus sine of 75 minus 45 so 2 and 1 half got cancelled so sine of 75 plus 45 so which is 120 and then sine of 30 so sine of 120 just like sine of 60 degree but it's in quadrant 2 so which is what positive so root 3 over 2 minus sine of 30 then that's 1 half so eventually it's root 3 minus 1 over 2 and that be the ratio and here's another one product to sum so this one is sine and sine again that negative 4 is just the it's just the leading coefficient so with sine and sine so it's 1 half so this time we're using cosine so cosine of x minus y minus cosine of x plus y okay so negative 4 times 1 half cosine of x minus y so 105 minus 15 again x is just 105 y is 15 and then minus cosine of 105 plus 15 so negative 4 times 1 half negative 2 so cosine of 105 minus 15 which is 90 and then cosine of this one here 120 okay so when it's minus the other one's plus so see that the structure is a little bit different okay so cosine of 90 so which is 0 cosine of 120 just cosine of 60 but it's in quadrant 2 so it's positive negative 1 half times negative 2 so negative 2 plus negative 2 times 1 half which is negative 1 so that's it so thank you for watching the video today so again if you guys like my channel so please subscribe click the bell and also refer to your friend people that who needs to um, review for the final 
So again, this one is good to, good to know for the product to sum identity. So this one is all about the final study packet for Algebra 2 and Trig. Once again, thank you for watching it. So I'll see you guys next time. You guys take care. Bye.